When we talk about one standard drink, we mean 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, 1.5 ounces of liquor. Alcohol has effects on the central nervous system, the function of which is to gather information and initiate behaviors. Alcohol interferes with pathways of communication in the brain. The brain operates by sending out and receiving signals from both the body and other brain regions. Molecules, called neurotransmitters, influence this process by either increasing or decreasing the likelihood that a message will be sent out from a brain cell. When alcohol is in the brain, it acts by both preventing excitatory neurotransmitters from working and by facilitating the operations of the inhibitory neurotransmitters. This dual effect makes it very difficult for the brain to carry out its normal functions. To measure someone's intoxication level, their blood alcohol concentration, or BAC, is calculated. The BAC tells you how much alcohol is present in the blood, in terms of percentage by volume. So a BAC of 0 0.10 means that 0.1% of a person's blood is made up of alcohol. BAC is most often measured using a breathalyzer. Why? 5% of the alcohol in your blood is removed through your lungs when you exhale. Therefore, the concentration of alcohol in the air you exhale is a reliable indicator of the alcohol concentration in your blood. Of the remaining 95%, 5% of the alcohol leaves your body through your urine and the remaining 90% is metabolized by your liver. On average, alcohol is metabolized at a rate of one drink per hour. The effects at this level are pretty mild. Along with a slight buzz in your head, you might feel more at ease and happier than normal. Alcohol is already acting on your brain's reward and pleasure centers, which explains why you're experiencing these pleasant effects. Euphoria, relaxation, and sociability are still on the rise. At this stage, your inner daredevil comes out to play, and your normally impeccable memory isn't quite up to its usual standards. This is mainly thanks to alcohol's effects on the cerebral cortex, a brain region that is involved in everything including sensory perception, motor activity, attention, impulse control, and memory. Vision, hearing, reaction time, speech, and coordination become noticeably impaired. You might notice that pushing the tiny buttons on your cell phone is strangely challenging, and that you're talking a little louder than usual. You still feel okay though, as the booze will boost your confidence in everything, including your own sobriety. What's more, your ability to make and execute plans, think rationally, and use good judgment are being compromised thanks to the prefrontal cortex slowly becoming more and more inhibited. It's probably a good time to mention that at point 08, you are no longer legally allowed to drive. Not a car, not a truck, and no, not even a bicycle. Alcohol is now making an appreciable impact on these areas of the brain. The limbic system regulates emotional responses. It essentially helps us inhibit ourselves. Most of the time, we know when to keep our mouth shut or when to back down from a confrontation. Alcohol can slowly bring this regulatory mechanism to a standstill, resulting in highly emotional or unusually aggressive responses becoming more and more common. The hypothalamus and pituitary gland play a role in the physical aspects of sexual arousal. While alcohol can decrease psychological inhibitions and increase the desire for sex, it can simultaneously suppress physiological functions resulting in temporary erectile dysfunction or low vaginal lubrication. The cerebellum plays an important role in motor control, affecting the accuracy of movement, precision, and coordination. With alcohol present, these all become compromised. Fine motor movements such as touching your finger to your nose become difficult and shaky. Balance is impaired and reflexes are slower to respond. A good percentage of people experience intense nausea at this level because of the acidic environment alcohol has created in the stomach. All the effects we previously mentioned, from unchecked emotions and impaired judgment to balance problems and delayed reflexes, are now becoming even stronger. Dazed, confused, and generally disoriented, standing and walking seem impossible. This puts you at increased risk of serious physical injury with the added danger that pain signals are now inhibited, making it more likely that you will fail to notice an injury until the effects of alcohol wear off. At this stage, nausea and vomiting are typical. Memory blackouts are also common. At this point, the effects that alcohol is having on your medulla are a serious cause for concern. The medulla controls autonomic functions you normally don't need to think about. Breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, and lastly, vomiting. Vomiting is a result of the stomach being irritated by the toxicity of the alcohol. The medulla is what triggers the gag reflex that allows you to clear vomit from your body. With a high enough dose of alcohol, this reflex is inhibited, and if you're unconscious, choking on your own vomit is a huge risk. Such cases often result in fatalities. Bladder function is also impaired, so loss of bladder control is not out of the question. The alcohol has turned off all communication pathways in your brain. The onset of a coma and possible death due to respiratory arrest are possible outcomes.